Hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. I wanted to share uh, a message that I received from the Galactic Federation of Light this morning. And the message was, tell them to call us in. So right now, as you are listening to this video, I want you to drop into your body. And I want you to just settle for a moment and feel and know that your family of light, your star family, the galactic beings, the angelic realm, the ascended masters, they are all with you right now. It is a matter of remembering how to call them back in, open yourself up and use your imagination to feel and experience them. The veils have literally collapsed into a now moment. These veils are were energetic fields that kept us from being able to really access the quantum field and the other dimensional realms, which kept us from being able to really access these higher dimensional beings. They're gone. Right now is a moment in history that we are able to finally be able to experience these beings in a much more palpable and easy way. And in saying that, I also want to preface that please stop beating yourself up if you can't necessarily feel them in the way that you expect yourself to feel. I'm going to give you three ways, three steps to begin to connect into these beings. I want you to be acutely aware of your belief systems around how you connect. I want you to be aware of the thoughts that you hold, okay? Because that will create your reality no matter what I tell you, no matter what you practice. Many of you believe you're blocked. Let that belief go. I don't care who told that to you. Let it go. Choose to release it. You're not blocked. Many of you believe that if you open up your energy center, your crown chakra, that dark beings are going to come in. Let that go. That's a belief system, right? It's not true unless you believe it to be your truth. Many of you believe that if you don't see them, they're not real. That's a belief system. Let that go. They're not physical in nature. They're energetic. First and foremost, they're energetic. Many of you believe that if you don't know their names, you won't be able to connect, that it's imperative that you know their names. They don't have names. We have names. We've given them names. They don't hold physical or human names. Okay? So when you begin to do this, and as you're continuing to courageously do this, you remember what are your beliefs around it? What are your thoughts around it? What's blocking you? Your head, your mind. You've got to surrender into not knowing anything other than being energetic, reminding yourself how to be energetic. And here's the other thing. You are the higher consciousness that you are tapping into and learning how to reconnect with. You are that higher consciousness inside your physical form right now. You're it, okay? So you're not different from, they're not higher than or better than. This is a reconnection and a remembering of not only who you are, but of all the beings that have been with you since the moment you dropped into human form. Contact that everybody talks about. Contact is happening. Contact, contact has always been. We have never not been contacted. We have always had assistance from galactics and star beings because we are galactic beings and star beings. Galactic beings and star beings created the earth plane. They created this entire experiment. They created the human form. We have never been separate from so contact means that we as humans are starting to shift our frequencies high enough that we are now remembering that not only are we higher dimensional consciousness, but there are a magnitude, there's thousands upon thousands of higher dimensional consciousnesses we like to call galactic beings or star beings that are out there and in here with us now. And so with the veils completely collapsed, it is time to call them in. So step one, you're going to call these beings in as often as you want throughout your day. They are already with you, but by calling them in, you are bringing conscious awareness to the fact that they are with you and you are allowing them into your space 
in a more palpable way. Imagine them outside of your house and they're standing by the door. And you're like, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Where they're at the door. Why don't they just come in? Because you have free will as a human. And these beings are going to honor your free will. Okay? And so you have to say, oh, please come in. Please come into my field, come into my space. So you have to open the door and tell them that you want to engage with them. You understand? Just because they're around you at all times, you don't just say, get, put your hands like this and say, okay, where are they then? Why aren't they feeling, why aren't they communicating with me? Why aren't they talking to me, right? You've got to invite them into your space. They honor free will. So we invite them in. I am inviting in my star family. I am inviting in my family of light. I am inviting in my galactic guides. I am inviting in the angelic realm. I'm inviting in the ascended masters, whoever it is. And remember, you don't need names because they don't have names. So it's okay if you don't know the name, please drop that attachment right now. It's going to block you from connecting. Step two, you have to open up your seventh energy center. You have to open up your crown. I am opening up my seventh energy center. I am opening up my crown. And when you do that, what are your beliefs around it and your thoughts? What are the beliefs and thoughts that others have told you to believe and think? You are safe to open. Why do we open the seventh energy center? Because the channel that goes through the body that holds the other six energy centers, that is what filters the higher dimensional consciousness when they come when it comes in to communicate with us all communication is energetic and it all moves through the channel to be digested so we can understand it all communication goes through this channel if we hold the channel shut then it is going to be very challenging to receive and open the connection and the communication the human body is designed to stay open. It always has been. But because we are in a third dimensional realm and field, we have shut it down because it's way too freaking intense out there. It makes perfect sense, but we now need to open it and keep it open as often as you want. Shut it down whenever you want. But you open it through the intention of saying, I am opening up my seventh energy center, my crown chakra. You may or may not feel something. That doesn't matter. Just because you don't feel it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Remember, you're not necessarily going to see things and it's still a reality. You're not necessarily going to feel things and it's still a reality, okay? So we open up the crown. As soon as we open up the crown, the beans come right into our field, right? And the, their radio station's on and our radio station is on, right? Now we're open to them. And then step three, you use your third eye to communicate. How does that work? Imagination. You use your imagination. Your third eye is not blocked, just like you're not blocked. Unless you want to believe that it is, then you go ahead and hold that. You have every right to hold any belief system you want. But I'm going to tell you right now, your third eye isn't blocked. Your third eye doesn't need to be activated unless you hold the belief that it does because somebody told you that it does. Okay, then go ahead and take all the tiny baby steps it's gonna take for you to activate it or hold the knowingness that it's open and activated and ready to be used. I'd choose that one, but go ahead and choose whichever one you want. It's a belief system and it's your belief system. But when you use your third eye, it's very simple. It's not these like complicated things that, 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 are, that are talked about out there. It's very simple. It's imagining. So I'm bringing in these beans of light, right? And I'm going to imagine what would it look like or feel like if they were here, because they are, but I've got to start to engage in this energy. What does the energy look like? What does the energy feel like? And so here is when you begin to engage. You tell the beans, you're the, you're the, or, you're the composer of this whole orchestra. So you tell them where to go. I want you to stand directly in front of me in a line. Great, there they are. Now you use your third eye, your imagination, to tap into the energy that's there. Is it tall? Is it short? Is it masculine? Is it feminine? Is it an animal? Does it fly? Does it feel galactic? 
You know how these energies feel. You just don't remember because you haven't engaged in a very long time. So begin to engage, tap in, and imagine these different energies. You'll know. I promise you. Just start doing it and you'll feel. Tell them to stand to the right of you or to the left of you or behind you. Imagine them in front of you putting light into your heart center. What would that look like? Use your imagination. That's the third eye. Imagine they have their hands on the top of your head or they have your hands on your cheeks. What do you want them to do with you? Use your imagination. If you don't use your imagination, then you're going to be sitting back like, okay, I'm waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. It's a co-creation. You've got to engage with them. We can't play the victim. We can't play the poor me. We can't play the something's wrong and I'm blocked and I'm not activated and I can't do it. You can only play that card for so long until you put on your big, big boot, your big pants, your adult pants, big boy pants, right? Or big girl pants and say, okay, I'm going to start to courageously engage. I'm going to start to engage with these beings. It's frustrating in the beginning, correct? Perhaps because you can't see them. Humans like to see in order to believe. It's frustrating in the beginning because you can't feel them perhaps. That's okay, they're still there. Maybe you can't hear them. Most of us won't hear them in right away, but they're still communicating. Let me talk a little bit about communication for a second. When the energy comes into your channel, as soon as you open up the front door, invite them in, open your crown and start to engage. Their frequency is going to move right through their channel. The way they communicate, their radio signal is going to go through your channel. And when it goes through your channel, you're going to digest that energy and consciousness, that message. You're going to in digest it as an emotion maybe. Maybe you feel happy. Maybe you feel joy and love. Maybe you start crying, right? That's you filtering that consciousness, that signal from them. Maybe you hear sounds. Maybe you hear light language. Maybe you start to hear words in your mind. Right? You start to have a, hear a conversation happening or you just hear certain words. Maybe you see something. Maybe there's a vision you see, a color that you see. Right, That's the information being filtered through your channel. And a lot of times when we hear them, it is not a distinct, separate, random, masculine, feminine voice outside of ourself. It's not what it is. It's not some external thing that's standing there speaking to us. It's energy. Please remember this. Let go of all your beliefs that there's some physical form that's going to stand there and start to communicate with, out loud to you. It's not how it's going to work right now. We're too dense. It's going to be telepathy, which is energy. It's not words. So when it goes into your system and into your channel, it's going to be filtered through your ego and personality. So it's going to sound like you. They, whatever it is that's with you, guiding you, is going to sound like your own voice speaking to you. I promise you a thousand percent that is what it sounds like. And the more you open to that and accept that and surrender into that, the more you're going to trust what you're hearing in your head as your own voice. 99.9% .9 of you hear them. You're just either too busy in your own thoughts, distracted, so you're not quieting, or you hear it and you don't believe it, you think it's you. You think it's you speaking to you because it sounds like you. Why would you not? And so I'm here to tell you, it is not necessarily always you, especially if you are engaging with them and inviting them in. Okay. It's them communicating to you, through you, and it sounds like you. And you get the choice to either believe it or not. I always fall into the place of the choice of no choice, which is I believe everything that I experience. I believe everything I feel. I would not be where I am right now doing the work that I'm doing if I didn't believe everything that I experienced energetically, everything that I heard energetically through my channel as my own voice. If I didn't trust it, if I didn't listen to it, if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't be here right now. So you get to choose. You get to choose whether you believe what you hear in your mind or not as the voice because they're speaking to you. I promise you. 
all day long. They're communicating with you. And so the more you do these three simple, easy steps, whether you quietly sit and do it or whether you do it throughout your day as you're walking around or doing stuff, it doesn't matter. The more you do this, the easier it becomes. And here's another thing I want to say to you. Watch your expectations, please. If you are expecting it to look a certain way or feel a certain way, sound a certain way because somebody else had an experience like that, somebody else told you this is what it looks like or feels like or sounds like, you are going to be holding yourself up to some sort of standard or expectation that may never come. And then what is that going to do? It's going to create a constant disappointment. And what is that going to do? It's going to stop you from communicating. Can you let go of any expectation you have about how to do this, what it will look like, what it will feel like, all of it? Can you just start from a blank slate? That is the easiest and quickest way to do this. All, number two, can you let go of the pressure that you're putting on yourself to connect? I want to connect so bad. I want to connect so bad. I'm, you already are. So the more you let go of this force, this push, this pressure, and say, I'm already connected. They're already with me. I just got to settle into my body to feel it. Let go. They're with you right now. Invite them in quickly. Right now, let's invite them in. I'm inviting in my family of light. I'm inviting in my galactic family. I'm inviting them into the space. I'm opening the front door and I'm inviting them into my room. I'm opening up my crown chakra. Say this out loud. I'm opening up my crown chakra. I've invited in my galactic family, my team of light. I'm inviting in the, the galactic federation of light. You invite in whoever you want. Now I want you to find your breath and just settle. Eyes open, eyes closed. And start to feel their energy around you. Tell them where to go. Sit next to me, sit in front of me, sit behind me. Put energy in my hands, put energy in my heart, put energy on the top of my head. You're an energetic being. You have a physical casing that holds all the energy. You have an energetic field outside of you, a foot and a half out, that will tap into the beings around you. Your body will vibrate. They're with you right now. And when we sit in this space, we're not expecting anything, right? There's no expectation. You just sit and be. That's it. Please let go of forcing anything. Let go of expecting anything. Let go of saying, what's your name? Who are you? And then frustratingly sitting there thinking, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Let that go. None of that matters. What matters is that you energetically connect over and over again until you begin to remember and then you begin to see, then you begin to feel, then you begin to hear, or the other way around, you begin to hear, feel, see, you begin to see or feel, hear, see, whatever the way is, right? doesn't matter. We have to get used to what this feels like. We have to get used to what this what this is all about. We have to let go of the stories that people have told us. We have to let go of the way that these beings may look. Because when you think to yourself, oh, a Syrian's gonna come into my space, what do you do? You think about any image that you've seen on Google as a Syrian, and that's the expectation you have. And then when you call them in and you don't see that, what do you do? Oh, it's not happening. They're not with me. And meanwhile, a Syrian is standing right next to you. You've got to let go of the stories that are out there on the internet. You've got to let go of the way people have told you they look and sound and feel and all of that. Let yourself have your own experience. And for most of us in the beginning, it is only going to be energy. That's contact. 
We are not physical beings. We are energetic beings. The higher dimensional realms are not physical. They're energetic in nature. We see it more physically when we step into that dimensional field by increasing our frequency of the body. But physicality only exists up until the seventh dimension. When you go beyond the seventh dimension, physicality no longer exists. It's all energy and frequency. So most of these beings are energetic. They're light. They shape shift down into lower frequencies so that we can see them better because we can then trust that they're there. They're not stupid. They know what we need. Most of these beings are not physical. They are energetic, but they shape shift into physicality. So we trust and believe they're there. Let go of any story you're telling yourself of what they should or shouldn't look like. Feel. Feel into the energy around you. Have a soft gaze. Knowing they're here. And have compassion for yourself as you learn and remember how to do this. You know it's easy as soon as you let go of controlling it, as soon as you let go of any stories you're telling yourself about it, as soon as you let go of any attachments or judgments around it. You are not blocked. You do not need to activate your third eye. You do not need to activate any other energy center. You are perfect and divine the way you are right now, no matter how much shadow work you think you still need to do. That has nothing to do with aligning and connecting with these beings. They don't say to you, oh, you have more work to do before you can connect with us. That is a third dimensional story. You do not need to hold a specific frequency. You do not need to be releasing all of this trauma. You don't need to have certain energy centers activated like the pineal gland or the pituitary gland. None of that needs to happen. It is your divine birthright to close your eyes, to invite them into your field, to open your crown and to say, I am ready to connect. It's your divine birthright. Practice those three steps over and over and over. Listen to the thoughts and the belief systems that come in and let them just dissolve out. Love the heck out of yourself as you are practicing this and let me know how it goes. They are waiting. They are ready. You are ready. You know how to do this. You can do it. I promise you the time is now. The time has always been a now, but now the veils have collapsed. It's much easier. I love you. Please let me know how it goes. Send me a, an email or a comment down below. As you begin to practice this, don't give up. If it is quiet, so be it. Keep showing up. If you have a day where you can feel something and then three days where you don't, don't give up. Keep opening to them. Keep having breakfast with them or lunch or dinner or snacks, or tea, or coffee, I don't care, whatever it is, keep showing up with them. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being in your form. Thank you for being with me on this channel and on this earth plane right now. This is a massive awakening. This is just the beginning. Contact has always been here. We're just now remembering how to contact and be connected.